All right, guys, today I'm gonna walk you through my hoof care that I do on my farm for my sheep. I get a lot of questions about this. I'm gonna run you through the annual preventative treatment that I run. I'm also gonna run you through an emergency treatment, something I'll pull a sheep aside if it's struggling a little extra and administer. I'm gonna share all of the supplies that I use, and if you wanna click on the link down below, there'll be a PDF with the foot bath recipe and all of these individual supplies listed as well as where you can purchase them. Hoof care is really a matter of debate within the sheep and goat arena. My philosophy and what I follow is an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I live and I farm in a very high rainfall area on very soft soil. The sheep I run are bred for rocky terrain. There's nothing that will naturally wear down the hoof wall. So I do it for them once a year by trimming and soaking. The soak is more for something called foot scald. Now foot scald and foot rot are two separate conditions, but the bacteria that causes the foot scald can segue into foot rot. So it's kind of your goal to catch it before it really escalates into something that is very bad. All right, so the emergency treatment I can do manually by just flipping the animal. So I guess I'll go ahead and run through that first. Say that you don't wanna run the annual hoof care like I'm getting ready to show you that I do, and you just have an animal that won't stop limping, it needs treatment, you need to simply just flip it on its behind, set it in the crook of your legs, basically, and then grab each of those four hooves and trim. What I'll do at that point in time is I will flush any debris out of the middle of the hooves. What I've been using it's a baby bottle with like an extra large spot to basically squirt it out. You could probably and probably should get a really powerful uh, water bottle that'll just spray really hard, but I'll clear any debris out from the middle of the hooves that might be causing that limp, and then I will run a trim. I use these super sharp foot shears, which are linked down below on that PDF, and then once I'm done trimming in that position, I'll run a spray on the hoof. Now I really have enjoyed this foot spray. It's by Vedersen Hoof Care. It is something, it's like a three-part cleanses, protects, and repairs. So it cleanses that bacteria that's causing the limp. It facilitates the repair and it actually creates a protective barrier on the hoof. It's very powerful. I've really enjoyed this. So I'll go ahead and spray each hoof with this after I'm done with that. During that manual treatment, I'll keep a toothbrush on hand in case anything inside of that hoof is lodged whether it's in the hoof wall or just between the hooves. My apologies to my brother. This probably belonged to him at one point in time. You can use it again if you like. And another, just an element of supplies is I always keep really, really sturdy gloves on hand for when I'm doing that manual process. So now that we are through that manual emergency style process, I'm gonna run you through my annual hoof care. Now this is one big, long, exhausting day and I don't enjoy it at all, but I have to tell myself it's one day out of 365. And then I can get back to doing all the stuff I love doing, like raising lambs and grazing sheep. But the day starts really early. I make sure to get a really big breakfast in because usually I'm not back into the house until dinner. So I start out with one of my favorites, which is an everything bagel and three farm fresh eggs. Follow me for more nutritional tips. Make sure to add extra butter on that bagel. I will set up my handling system for the hoof care day, which just involves kind of rearranging things, making sure I have a spot for my tub and I use the spin trim shoot. This is equipment from Lakeland. I really enjoy it and it allows me to do these big jobs solo. Even though they take all day, I can do it myself. Once all of my equipment is arranged, I will go ahead and prep the foot bath, which I stick a very, very liberal squirt of Dawn dish. Di I run a really liberal squirt of Dawn dish soap on the bottom of all of those troughs, which I'm going to link those troughs down below in that PDF. I tried using buckets one year, Tupperware containers, and I'm sorry, mom, but I broke like eight in a row before the day was done. So those rubber troughs specifically for foot baths are important if you're gonna be running your sheep. Now the soak is a three part soak and I usually use copper sulfate crystals. Could not find any of those locally. So I used a Hoofplex foot bath. It's an ultra concentrate as effective as copper sulfate. It's what I could find locally and that's why I bought it. It's about one cup per 30 gallons. So it's really, really potent. If you're gonna use copper sulfate, I personally would use five to seven cups per 30 gallons. That's my personal measurement, and you can do your own research and figure out what ratio should work for you. Once all of that is in the tub, I'll fill them up with water and just simply start the day, run the sheep through. The hoof trimming process, what you wanna look for is overgrowth. 
Sometimes an animal will have a lot, sometimes it will have a little. Now there is a philosophy out there that I can 100% confirm, and that is that grain-fed sheep grow hooves like crazy, whereas grass-fed sheep won't. I can absolutely confirm that. What you're looking at here on the screen is a grain-fed hoof versus a grass-fed hoof. The sheep is the same age. It's a yearling sheep. Neither have ever had their hooves trimmed, but the sheep with the excess hoof growth is a really good quality ewe that I bought actually from another farm. She was fed and supplemented grain up to six months, and the other one was a yearling that was born on my farm and had had no grain whatsoever within her life. While I'm at it, I will just kind of scrape anything out from between the hooves. You want to look for overgrowth around the hoof wall, around the interior of the hoof, and then you're going to notice these kind of prongs growing out from the front of the hoof. You want to cut those down to the pad. Now when you're trimming, you want to kind of think of it as a fingernail. You don't want to trim like right up to the pad of the sheep's hoof. If you do that, you're gonna leave them sore, you're gonna notice they're limping, and I say that because I've done it before. You wanna think about your own fingernails and how it's a bit sore if you trim them all the way to the pad. So I like to leave just a little bit left over above the pad, and I believe this creates a more comfortable situation for the sheep itself. Before we close out, I'm going to go ahead and take a minute and answer one of your questions. Please leave your questions in the comment section, guys. I really enjoy receiving them. I'm going to try to answer as many within the videos as I can upcoming, but this is a question I receive a lot, and it is, how do you sell your sheep? Where do you take them to sell? The answer is, I sell all of my sheep directly off my farm using my website and my newsletter. My website is shepherdess.com and once a year I will sell all of my sheep there and then arrange pickups straight off the farm. It allows people to know me, to know my farm, to know my sheep, and ultimately I earn a little bit more because people know exactly what they're getting. You're not going to a sale barn where the origin is unknown or uncertain. I spend an entire year establishing a bit of trust with that buyer, and then they have the opportunity to buy straight off my farm. I outline the entire process in this video right here, so if you want a more in-depth, please tap that, and I'll see you over there.